The story I want to tell today is about three brothers who embark on a pilgrimage to meet their God. It doesn't have to be the Christian God. It's a fictional story. It's just the pilgrim's God. Now each pilgrim who makes the trip to see his God gets to ask him one question that God must answer. Eager to leave, the brothers say goodbye to their families and they leave their small village behind. They cross a thick forest and travel past a lake so wide, it takes them two weeks to clear it. They venture through many nights of sandy dunes and it takes them a whole month to hike through a series of mountains and valleys until they finally reach a small cave by the sea guarded by seagulls. The first brother forgets about his fatigue. He's eager, he can't wait. He goes into the cave, carefully crawls his way toward a flickering light coming from a small fire in the center of the cave. The pilgrim immediately knows he's in the presence of his God. He feels it. The pilgrim bows down before the light to ask his question. God, how does one get rich quick? The cave starts to rumble. God answers the question. Pilgrim, the quickest way to get rich is with patience. You must plant a thousand olive trees and wait for 30 years for them to grow. And then you can sell all the fruits and you shall be a rich man. Pilgrim lifts his head up in disbelief at this answer. He's not satisfied with it. 30 years? That's a long time to wait to get rich. That's not quick at all. That's not good enough for this pilgrim. Angered, he gets up, marches out the cave, and as he reaches the exit, he kicks a seagull in the chest. He bumps his fists at the clouds and curses his God. Damn you! But God is still listening, and he sends a bolt of lightning at the pilgrim, striking him on his head, and within seconds, there's nothing left of him but the smell of burning flesh. His two brothers, waiting outside, watch their brother burn. They're terrified. What happened? What did their brother do to deserve the scorn of their God? And despite their fear, the second brother decides it's time to go into the cave. He too wants to ask his question. A humble man he crawls through the cave toward the flickering light. And just like his brother before him, he feels it. He's in the presence of his God. And the second pilgrim asks, God, how does one win the prettiest wife? The cave begins to rumble, and God answers. Pilgrim, the prettiest wife is one with patience. You must become the best man you can be, and then one day, the woman who deserves you shall find you, and you shall have the prettiest wife. The second pilgrim also looks up in disbelief at the burning bush. He's not satisfied. What kind of answer is this? Patience? It could take half a lifetime to find a pretty wife that way. Pilgrim can't wait any longer. He wants the prettiest wife right now. And this brother too, angered, marches out the cave and as he reaches the exit, he kicks a seagull in the chest. He pumps his fist at the earth and curses his God. But God is still listening. He parts the earth below the pilgrim's feet, sending him down a chute into a fiery pit. Within seconds, there's nothing left of the pilgrim but the smell of burning flesh. The third and last brother can barely stop shaking from his nerves now. He's terrified. Should he run? He decides to go in anyway. He came this far. Unlike his brother before him, he stumbles humbly toward the flickering light. He bows down but the fear has gotten to him. He can't remember what he was supposed to ask. So 
the pilgrim begins to speak. God, I've been building a house. I built a house without running water. So I'll have to go outside each morning and each evening to fetch water from the well that I dug myself with the buckets I made myself. I built a house without central heating. So each afternoon, I wander into a nearby forest to cut down wood with the ax that I sharpened myself. I built a house without electricity. So I have to spend my days outside in the light. But at night, I sit quietly by the candles that I made myself. I built a house with a roof that requires regular maintenance. And after each storm passes by, I wait for the roof to dry and I go to inspect it. And I repair it where needed using nothing but the tools I made myself. I have a house full of needy children. So I work the land all day to provide for them using the plow that I pull myself. I have a house with an imperfect wife. She needs to be pleased now and then, so I travel to town and buy her a gift of the money I made myself. Now the pilgrim falls silent and the cave begins to rumble. But God doesn't answer, for no question has been asked yet. God asks the pilgrim, when I've done all these things, I put my children to bed and they tell me they believe in you. And when my wife goes over to kiss them goodnight, she tells them she believes in them. When she goes to rest, I tell her I believe in her. Pilgrim is not choking on his tears and can barely utter his question. When I've done all these things for you, do you believe in me? God answers the question. Pilgrim, have a good look at your hands. For when you return home, you've hauled water from the well you dug yourself with the buckets you made yourself, and you fixed your roof with the tools you made yourself, and you fed your needy children, working the plow you pulled yourself, you gathered firewood with the axe you sharpened yourself, and you pleased your imperfect wife with the gift you bought from the money you made yourself. When you've put your children to bed, and they told you they believe in me, and your wife told your children she believes in them, and you told your wife you believe in her, when you are resting at night by the light from the candles you made yourself, I want you to have a good look at your hands, pilgrim, for your hands are just like mine, and I believe in you.